And hello everyone, good to see you. Paul Tranning gonna dive into today's master class around Photoshop, which is gonna be so much fun. So thank you everybody for joining. Yeah, we're gonna get into this vibrant color, one of my favorite things to do, right? Sort of taking something and giving it some, some pizzazz, basically, with, uh, with lots of color. So that's the idea. Um, so thanks so much for joining me. Really appreciate you guys hanging out. You can see one of the images right here. Uh, hello, Susan Wilson, Frank. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. Audio and video are good. Um, Andreas. Uh, oh, I like Nashville. S Susan. Headed to Nashville in February, right? Isn't it 6th Street where there's all the, the bars and... Um, uh, like concert venues, like every single place is also a concert venue of some sort. Uh, so yeah. All right, thank you so much for joining me. So let's go ahead and jump in. You can see, again, one of the pieces that I'm working on right now, there's this one. <clears throat> and there's also this one here as well, sort of, you know, giving some images some vibrant color and making them pop as they say um, is the goal so hello kevin from richmond virginia i don't think i've been to richmond i don't even know if i've been to virginia yeah i have haven't i somebody tell me hello from sweden is awesome oh how could you not love Sweden? So we can do some fun things with this image and then we're gonna move on to this one because this one is really drab when it comes to um, this one here. Yeah, you could add so much vibrant color to that one. So that one's gonna be a lot of fun, but we'll start with this one and we'll make it kind of fast and uh, give this image some pop. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is make this a little bit magical. I wanna really remove this road. So I'm quickly like selecting it including all these vehicles right in here. And yeah, we're just gonna uh, wipe them off the face of the earth. Cause that's the sort of power I have right now. Be drunk with power here in Photoshop. So you can see what I'm selecting right in here. Um, you can go to content aware fill. I usually do it like, I usually go to fill and then content aware fill, but there is this whole interface when it comes to content aware fill. You can select and it will automatically sort of predetermine how it's gonna fill it all in and did an amazing job, right? So it shows you the sample area. Uh, you knew this was gonna be an easy one, uh, but that's where it's pulling from and it's filling in this area like so. So you can always add and subtract um, from there as you can see, but I'd say that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and merge these two. Hello, Chris Olson from Colorado. Chris, do you have some snow, man? We got some snow here in Denver. So that is fun, huh? Um, let's use our object selection tool. I'll change this to lasso. And again, the goal is just kind of remove uh, also. Again, we're gonna make a brilliant image in here. Kind of want to replace the sky as well. So. Just grab this, just grab this. I'm just grabbing stuff. Grab this content right over here. Hopefully you could see that. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'm using this object aware select tool to sort of add and remove. So that's what's happening. right up here. Again, fast and loose. I'll also use the quick selection tool a lot. Uh, but again, right in here for these parts. Yeah, let's get that squared away. There we go. Uh, I'd, I'd probably use the quick selection tool on a lot of this because I really like how it grabs uh, pixels. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm sure you guys forgive me for that one cloud in there. There's this one. And uh, yeah, let's just have some fun. Um, uh, where is this? That is a good question. Um, 
We can go with Dolomites. Maybe we can see the license plate on this vehicle here. I have no idea. I'd have to search for image 2401. I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay, there we are. Let's just duplicate that. Mask it. Hopefully everybody's having a good Friday. Um, I got a fun day of uh, doing all sorts of things. Mainly these master classes. So thanks so much for joining me out there. Uh, Janelle, I see you. Um, Jean as well on Facebook. Hi, WA Graphics. Hello, Muriel. Awesome. WA Graphics from Pakistan. Okay, so we got some bleed in here. I'm going to jump in, double click. Let me just clean this up because this is going to bother everybody if we don't. We'll use our Refine Edge brush. Come in here and we'll just kind of run this right over the edge. Okay, so first off, does anybody know what I could have done instead of doing what I just did when it came to removing the sky, right? I could use sky replacement. And um, plenty of snow here in Italy in the Alps. Ah, Florian, you live in Italy? That's where my boss is from. Actually in Florence. So there we go. We did what we needed to do. We can output this as a layer mask. Okay, so an easy way to do a lot of that is right over here. I could just select background, edit, sky replacement, bam. Yeah, let's go with that sky. Let's see what happens. Boom, that is done. That's my last used sky. And go beyond that as well, using a number of these. Um, and yeah, there we go. Jared Phillips, sky replacement. You're exactly right. And actually loading up more skies. So hopefully everybody got the memo. Did you guys get the memo? about um, get more skies and download free skies. So go to that flyout menu, and download free skies. That's gonna launch this lovely website. Hello, Manny from Mexico. Hello, my friend, good to have you here. Uh, spectacular, why would you not get spectacular? It's a, an SKY file, okay? So that's what's downloading. Let's go in here. There's my SKY. Um, on Mac, you're actually able to just drop, you should be able to just drop it in. Let's just try that. Take that. Let's see if I could drop that in. Spectacular. I don't know if those were in there a moment ago. I could have already had those loaded in, but there the spectacular ones are. So yeah. Boom, there we are. Night skies with lights and stars, please. Sounds like a fantastic idea, right? So we want to make these sort of like work with vivid colors, right? We really want this to pop, and I'm going to show you how like I would typically do that, right? So there's our new sky. Anytime you do that, it is gonna do some masking. The masking is not gonna be perfect. So here's my mask versus the one it automatically did. So you could maybe steal this layer mask or again, if you didn't do a good job or whatever you wanna do, that's available to you is stealing that mask, okay? Um, Cause if you take a look at this, turn that off, you could see there's the sky that we're dealing with. So if you wanted to steal it, this is how you would do that. You'd come over here, take this, hold down the option key, click and drag, boom. We've stolen it, okay, let's hide all that stuff, right? But this time it has just kept the sky. So what do we do? We do an invert on that mask, right? So that's how that works. Boom, boom, boom. I wanna add more to this. So let's change the canvas size, height, 4,000, why not? There we are, boom. 
Let's make it spectacular. And whether you use this or not, you still have these skies because these are given to us for free. So it's like, yeah, I could use this. Let's maybe take this sky, uh, delete the layer mask, and you could see that huge sky that I have available uh, to me. And then we'll just like resize it. But it's not, uh, currently doesn't, you know, I could, I could do some more matching. So we need to do some color matching uh, to match this sky to this ground. And that's really what sky replacement does. Over here, if we take a look at this, turning this on, uh, there are some levels that are being used right in here. So let's double click on that, you could see excuse me, curves are being used. So I could still apply that curves to this background. So I basically have stolen uh, all of the properties from Sky Replacement to make my own uh, sort of vibrant um, situation I have going on here, okay? The sky is pretty. It still needs to be cast down below for sure. In fact, let's just unlock this, unlink. So let's try this. In fact, I'm gonna just get rid of this. That's just gonna get in the way. Let's get rid of that. Uh, let's do cut out background. Let's try this. We're gonna turn this into a smart object. Okay, and I'm gonna try to steal the color from the sky and and map it to uh, this, this land. Okay, so we'll go to that land. We'll go to neural filters. Right, so we have all those vibrant colors in the sky. And right in here, we wanna try out harmonization, right? So we're turn that on, and now we're gonna go ahead and pick that sky layer. Picking that sky layer, crossing our fingers, right? And ultimately, hey, does a pretty good job. Cheers. Afroja, what's up everybody? Um, EAI Design, how you doing, buddy? From Brazil. Fantastic. Like, look at this. Like, this did a lot of the work. You could still see I didn't do a great job with the masking. And it really starts to show up when you, you know, swap out the sky. But, like, look at those colors are, like, right on. Uh, big thing right down here. Just change this to Smart Filter. I don't know why it's been defaulting to just to New Layer, but go ahead and make that a Smart Filter. Click OK. There we have that cutout background, okay? I'm gonna double click on that. I don't know if you saw me earlier, but I did make this a smart object. Let's just move that down some. Just gonna do some, a uh, little bit of cleanup right in here. So, boom. I'm gonna use the tool I typically would use is the quick selection tool. And that just allows me to click and kind of scroll over this top part and then fill with the foreground color, which is black. So that's what I'm doing right in here, especially right here. So you get the idea. How's everybody doing today? Oh yeah, let's get it, let's get it. Get those pixels. Get rid of that sky. Oops. There we go, that should do the trick. Save, close. Yeah, uh, so decrease, so if I, Florian, good question. Decrease the selected mask so you could go in and subtract. Um, it would have subtracted around the edges too. So what I actually did, I could do that. That could work out just fantastic, which is a great idea. I actually just, I just moved the layer mask down probably more than I needed to, but let's go ahead and take a look. So we'll go back into this landscape. There we go. That's pretty darn cleaned up. Everything is uh, looking pretty darn good. Okay, so again, I'm just making this like a vibrant scene is the goal, okay? 
right now I have some vibrancy going on, right? I could add some more by adding curves, right? I'll typically play with curves some, make the darks darker. Let's actually unlink that. Uh, make the darks darker, make the lights lighter, start to play with uh, some of these properties, right? Just to give it a little bit more of a punch, but it's getting a little bit too dark in parts there, okay? Um, in fact, I almost need to bring it up a little bit. The problem is I'm matching two photos. I gotta make sure all my blacks match. And that's probably the one thing that's gonna stand out the most is when your blacks don't match up. So that's why I brought it up a little bit, right? So these shadows were way dark, right? They were way too dark for the overall photo. Bring that up a little bit, right? So it kind of matches the darkness right there, roughly, right? Um, is what I'm going for. So just bring that up a touch and uh, that will work out just fine. Uh, now I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make this like, I'm gonna make it pop, as they say, right? Background mountains to the left are too bright. Yeah, I agree. These ones right over here. These ones are way too bright. And good call because this, actually let's go ahead and fix that now. Um, so that's my curves for the main one. I'm just gonna move that over. Let's drop it right in there because I'll be using it. And uh, let's, do, we could do this a couple different ways. Yeah, sure, I'll throw another curves on there just for fun. So this is our overall curves. And this is exactly how you'd work. You'd work as, at, you know, on the image overall, try to get it dialed in, and then you'll notice all the weird parts like right down here. So what does that mean? You need to be able to select that area. Again, using quick selection tool, I'll jump in and I'm selecting those background um, mountains. So we have the background, sort of the mid-ground mountains and the foreground like land. Just grabbing that. Okay, so there we go, we have that. Now let's just go ahead and apply. Ba -ba. Invert, wait for it. Wait, what just happened? Invert. Deselect. Bah. Invert. There we go. Got it. So what did I do? I just created this mask based on that selection. Now we can have some fun. You'd see darkening that like so, because you're exactly right. That was looking pretty bad. Right. Another way to do this is to adjust the transparency. That's going to blend it in even more. Uh, <laughs> Stoney, your, hus your hubby said, hi, cheerful voice guy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm a little cheery. All right. So. So I was playing with curves. Curves aren't really doing me any favors. I could try to get this dialed in, right? And it might take some of curves, it might take some other things. But what I'm actually gonna do next is I'm gonna take the uh, mountains, tans, command J, take this, drag that down, ba -ba -ba -ba. take this, drag this down, take this, invert that, there we go. Now, what did I just do? I separated out. And let's make sure I grab this crazy halo. What is what is happening here? Guys, it's like we're doing work. Yeah, you know what? This is work, but you know what? It is the best work ever. Right, so now we have the background mountains. Right? Wait, did I do that right? There we go. I had these wrong. Because that happens. Okay. There we go. Now we have our background mountains, and then we have our foreground mountains. That's what we'll call them. Boom, boom. Ba, 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 ba. Command T. Uh, hold down that shift key, stretch it down. Now all I'm gonna do is just drop the opacity down. 
and throw the curves back on there. There we go. I did it. That looks much better, right? Can we just kind of go with that? And again, I can tweak this a little bit more, but that blends it in so much better. Even though I still got a little bit of a weird peak right there. I could always fix that later. Now let's get into making this pop like I was just about to say. All right. Oh, I, do I have an elf on the shelf? Yeah, I, it's actually a little birdie. It's a little like snowbird and it's adorable. Okay, so I was gonna add more to this. Um, maybe I'll do that before I make a pop. Right, let's take this guy. Let's remove the background. Let's take him. I don't know why I'm doing this. Hey, well, you know, just for scale, I don't know. Let's just like throw this astronaut guy in here. Okay, here he is. I don't know why I do this. I like, I like astronauts. But here's a situation where I have this astronaut. Astronaut does not match. You guys know how to do this at this point, right? Because what do we do? We could steal colors from the foreground or background image. And uh, this is going to be something I'm going to do again using neural filters, harmonization. Steal that color from even the sky. Let's do that. You ready for this? Because that's where I, st I stole. I tinted the mountains the color of the sky. Now I'm tinting this guy. Hopefully, the color of the sky as well. Let's crank it up. Fine, let's change it to background mountains. <laughs> Poor guy was left behind. He's like, really? You guys left without me? Really? So rude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Okay, so you ready for this pro tip as well? Um, here is the the guy. It's like the highlights look good, but the darks don't. The darks need to be like this green. Well, I have this other layer. The original astronaut actually had a nice green that matched the background, right? So ha I want to keep the darks of this top image, right? So let's move them over just to show you. Um, by changing this, right? So don't just get rid of the darker, by changing this to lighter color, right? So just keep, um, remove the lighter colors and then keep those darker colors is what just happened. Okay, cool, cool. Let's move on with the rest of our life because this isn't even the, the darn thing I wanted to work on. I have a whole other um, design that I want to share with you guys that I'm so excited about. Object selection tool. But these little things will bother us as well. <laughs> All right, we did it. That's good. There's our little guy. Let's put him in a layer. Astronaut. Okay, and then let's grab a brush. Ah, my boss just said, make it pop. Oh, that's funny. That is funny. Make it, make it pop, Mike. Make it pop. All right, so these are uh, some of Kyle's concept brushes. Can we just admire this brush real fast? Oh, look at this nice brush. Perfect. It's what I need, right? I'm actually using it to kind of like erase, right? Because I'm going to just have some of that, again, kind of set to random, kind of overlap, right? Make it look like he is, you know, standing in that grass. So that's all we want to do, something like that done 
There's our guy. Typically, I'd put a spaceship up here. We're telling a whole story about like, oh, he was, he got left behind. Don't you hate it when that happens? Dang it. Do I have a quick spaceship I could use? No. Either way, let's let's have some fun with this because this is how I'd make a make something pop, right? Here's just a bunch of junk. This is all my this is all my space junk. Let's just group that, put that in a separate folder, space junk, okay? And this is what I'm working with now. Let's even get rid of that. We've simplified, cleaned up everything. Uh, I'll do this. I'll again a number of ways to do this. This is what I do to make images pop. I'll copy this. Um, I'll, like copy all the merge layers. I'll go to a new file, I'll paste it in, and I know I've shown this before, but I think this is just really cool. Using HDR toning. HDR toning flattens the image. That's why I did it uh, in a separate file, okay? So now we're in this HDR toning dialog. From here, I usually drop it down. First of all, you could already tell how much it's made it pop, right? If we take a look at the initial and then uh, the HDR toning version. And again, we're gonna, this is gonna get worse before it gets better. Let's try Scott 5. Boom, baby. Look at that. I'm bringing out all the richness of this entire design. Um, Scott 5, by the way, might not be, I don't know if you actually have these or not. You should. But I like photorealistic RC5. Scott 5. Like, the, all these bottom ones are fun to play with. Right? We'll try RC5. Way too much juice. Right? It's like, whoa. It's like we just poured Red Bull all over our design. Right? Surrealistic. Super intense. Right? But I'm just stealing a lot of this, um, some of this edge glow and uh, detail for it. So anyways, that's all. Copy. Go back to my landscape, paste it in, just so you can see the difference, sort of like your before, your after. But with these two, now I can start to kind of play with the opacity and uh, um, just to start to bring out some of the things that I want to bring out. So if I just want to bring out, say, the lighter colors, right? See what that does right there? It's like maybe don't make the darks, don't give all those darks all that punch but bring uh, a lot of that detail through uh, with, by, by changing this blend mode to lighten, light, lighten. So this is HDR toning. Uh, where have the presets been hiding? I don't know. Google HDR toning presets or make your own. But um, that's Scott Kelby. So when it says Scott 5, that's Scott Kelby is who are uh, and then I forgot the other guy's name. And I'm sorry. But now we just made this image pop. And we're cool with it. Cool. Oh, hello. Uh, can I move on to something else? Oh, it's similar to high pass, but better. Ooh, nice. Yeah, good point. High pass is also good, which is a filter under, under filters. Here's another thing you can do. Rather than doing the copy paste, bring it forward and back, you could also try your... Uh, color lookups, right? So color lookups are going to give this a pop as well. Um, two strip will just make it teal and um, uh, what's the other opposite of teal? Orange, right? But you could always kind of go through some of these to get, uh, to maybe make your image pop uh, that you'll just have to kind of go through manually. Like this Fuji, that Fuji lens. Come on, buddy. There we go. Also like makes it pop. So we're just having some fun here, right? It adds a lot of noise too, good call. So uh, again, like a lot of this is like the processing that you would do before, like as your last step, right? So again, it's just a lot of that processing, right? So if you didn't want to do the HDR toning, what you can do is you could use a color lookup. You can use all your adjustment layers. You could add a new layer. I'm going to option click on that new layer button. Uh, we're going to change this. You ready for this? We'll change this down to uh, screen. 
Is it screen? I do not remember. Oh yeah, fill screen with neutral color. No, that's not what I want. <sighs> Soft light, that's what I want. So uh, I can create a sharpen or a dodge and burn layer. Dodge, burn, layer, right? Because rather than, you know, giving everything this like light and dark look, I can control that a little bit more by having this dodge and burn layer. It's just a new layer that's set to soft light. Uh, it's filled with 50% gray, so click OK. Right, I'll turn off the color lookup and everything else. I'll hit B for brush. I'll change my brush to the soft round. And uh, hold on, wait for it. Brush tool, there we go. Crank this up. So just to point this out, if I paint with black, this is the burning, right? I paint with white, that's gonna be your dodging. So I can go through and say, you know what? Let's dodge an area, let's burn another. Uh, you get the idea. Cool, cool. So you're gonna wanna add some more highlights. Maybe that's not gonna be as strong, right? Or that, uh, or I want parts to be a little bit darker. Hey, and jump in, add a little, add your darks, add your lights, all that fun stuff. Cool around the edges, things like that. All right, guys, I'm just playing around. Can you tell? Biola, how dare them? How, how dare them? Oh yeah, you know what? I actually forgot a shadow here, but it's actually fine. Looks great, let's move on to our other designs. We did our landscape, right? I like the HDR toning version. Right, it's, it's a little intense. I, f I find if, if you're struggling with any of, um, you know, these overall color adjustments you're doing, like step away from your computer, go get some vodka, right? A really stiff drink, come back, you'll see it with new eyes that are definitely blurry. Just kidding, don't get vodka. Maybe just get some water, all right? Okay, so let's move on. There's image one. Remember I said there's this image number two as well. <laughs> All right, so let's go to this statue, which I've already been working on. Cutting it out, I wanted to take something that like had like virtually no color at all and really like, again, make it pop, bring it to life with vibrant color. I wanted glows, I want all the fun things, right? Um, and I'm only about 90% there, but what I've done, and I'll show you, I'm gonna, I, I have this down to a certain point that we'll talk about, okay? Because um, I'm working on this design. What I've basically done is I've cut up this, um, this little guy into different parts. Bop, 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 bop. Up. right down here even down here like this is the kind of like the last part there's more to it um, but let me show you how this is done basically right let me show you how to make a vector you guys know how to make a vector mask I'll delete this vector mask like let's say for instance I just want to kind of mask out this part down here so um, I'm gonna select my pen tool I'll go in click 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 uh, I'm currently just making a, uh, a shape-based layer. Just clicking around because that's what I need to do for these curves. Clicking over here, click. Right, just like that. Following this around. But this is also going to be cracked, so it's actually going to work. We're going to veer off. We'll click maybe right here. Down like that. Come across here, follow this curve down like that. If you ever put, uh, if you press down and you add a point, right? Like I just added a point. I'm like, oh no, that's too far away. Hold down your space bar. Your space bar will pick it up and let you move it around as long as you didn't let up on your uh, mouse button. Right? And by the way, if you don't want to see all this black, you can take the fill down to zero. Technically, this is still, it's a shape layer, by the way. Okay, so there's my shape layer. 
really doesn't matter. I could have done a, a path layer, but ultimately I'm gonna have this path right here. For this path, what do we wanna do? We wanna save it and we'll call it, you know, bottom half, right? But um, with that path selected, I'll go to my layer where I want to add the vector mask, right? And then I'll go to layer vector mask and make a vector mask out of this current path. But boom, there it is. Now we have that nice vector path, right? There's other ways of doing this. But I just find it's easy to just jump in and start creating that path right away. Um, so yeah, and by the way, I still have that shape layer in case I need it. But now I have this part as well, okay? Cool. Um, yeah, so that's how I did all of this. Like, let's take this part, Right, creating the different parts of this, let's do uh, other, like lower, lower torso, right? So I duplicated that layer, right? And since I wanna create the lower torso, this is like the upper shoulder. I'm creating the lower torso. Let's grab direct selection tool, grab these points, grab these points, because we want that top edge to match. We'll just drag this down. Now I have this bottom half right, that I can start to adjust into place like it, like a champ, right? In fact, I'm gonna have this go right here. And this is probably what I'll have for this part. And I could always hit, don't hit the minus key because you're not in Illustrator. You wanna go to delete anchor point and we could delete some of those anchor points like so and stuff like that. All right, guys, you guys get the idea. I'm supposed to be creating some vibrant color and I've been m busy messing with paths and things. So let's fix it. One more thing, Command J, do this last little, p this is gonna be the um, pedestal, P-D-E-S-T-A-L, pedestal. Hopefully I spelled that right. Move that on down and get rid of a lot of these points. All right, let me check chat. How you guys doing? Tim's in the house. Tim, I just gotta say, I just really appreciate you, my friend. I just really appreciate Tim. One of the smartest, kindest, um, just modest, most modest people you'll meet. He told me to say all of that, by the way. He really did. Just kidding. <laughs> Tim, I'm just saying you're awesome. And I'm just so glad that uh, that we hired you, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm so glad we got gotcha. you. We got him, people. You know what? Good people are hard to find. We got gotcha. you. You're not going to escape either. We're not going to let you. Let's move that over. Move that down. Okay, we're done. We're done. Now you know the deal with vector masks. Why do we want to do vector, vector masks? We want all those smooth lines. Guess what? All these parts have the lovely vector mask. And now that makes up all of this. And now we can have fun breaking it apart, adding glows, all that fun stuff, right? Uh, yeah, Tim... Uh, Gosh, what is it? I think Tim paid me in some fake money, like some fake currency that's not that's not uh, um, not Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is real. Okay, so let's jump in here. Let's kind of deal with um, again adding glows. I'm gonna save this because this is huge, and I can start kind of removing parts is what I wanted to do, and add some glows on the inside and have it wrap around. It's a lot of work, and I only have. 15 minutes so <clears throat> oh yeah so this is this is gonna be a lot of work it really is 
Like, why did I think of even doing this, by the way? <laughs> you ever jump into things, you're like, oh, this will only take me five minutes. And then like three hours later, you're like, holy cow. Right, so again, I, I would wanna add like a little bit of glow in there, right? By the way, we can add gradients to the background as well, right? We do a number of things. We do a th thousand different things. I just wanted this, I wanted to crack open this guy and have glows come out everywhere, okay? So that was, that's what I was gonna do, right? And it's all about sort of playing with light, having it bounce around, adding adjustment layers, adding and removing from those adjustment layers and all those stuff. No, 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 no. All right. Let's go back over here. You ready for this, people? I'm loving this chunk right here. Oh yeah, that's, oh, that's nice. This part right here, oh yeah. Right, that's what we want. Zoop. Bend it into place. Anytime you're using the transform, if you right click, you have access to everything else. Because not only did I want to rotate it, right? Yeah, I want to stretch it out. You know, yes, I'll hold down the, <clears throat> the shift key, but right click. And then you want to go into warp, right? Because we're going to really warp this into place to have it go sort of like from edge to edge, right? Creating the inside of this person's... Head. It's all crazy like, right, like that. That's what we're going for. Cool. Right? Stealing from parts. We don't have to make up anything. Yeah, uh, by the way, this is, I'm, I'm, uh, gosh, I'm not positive. I was going to say I'm almost positive. Um, feel free to use, uh, like, uh, you know, we have all of these lovely plugins. I'm using Freestock Search 2, and we can search for a statue. So let's just see what we get for photos. There's already some brilliant statue photos in here, like this stuff. And this is so good because like, I, I shouldn't have to make up things out of thin air. It's gonna be, it's gonna do me a, a, a lot more good to study from real life, right? And when I say that, I mean, you know, noticing the, you know, how this is cracking, right? Look at how that's cracked. Guess what? I don't have that on mine. I don't, I don't quite have it, right? And again, this is fake, this is real. So getting to this point um, is gonna be something fun to play with. But the great thing is we can play with that all we want because right up here. So for this hair, let's go right over here. Da -da -da -da. We can add a layer mask with a ves vector mask. So, let's open up our brushes. I want just like a dry media brush that's really rough. Right, like this big crazy thing. I don't know if I have a favorite today. Uh, I am using a Wacom, so I'm able to adjust the position. But now I can paint on that layer mask with black and get those rough edges is what I'm going for. Not those dots, so maybe this is this might not be the right brush. It is not the right brush. Okay, let's do this this Conte pencil. There we go. This is what I want, like this roughness just along that edge. Uh, but we need to deal with lighting too. How do you get to the stock photo tool? Uh, you have to download it. So go to the, uh, right over here, go to browse plugins and then search for like photo finding something or other, because <laughs> there's more than one photo search. You want stock photo search. Here's another one. Where did it go? Stock solo. That's another one you could check out, right? So again, uh, the benefit of that is it's searching multiple stock sites to get you what you want. Okay. Let's get back into this. Uh, I have some of this. It's working out okay. Okay. Let's have my brain think about some things. And 
I could literally spend an hour just like on working on a, on this, um, just on this edge alone, right? It's gonna be, that might be more around like one of the final steps to be honest with you. Um, but again, how do you like make this look more realistic, right? And what it's gonna mean is there's gonna be more light kind of splashing like on that edge And I'm just painting with one color, knowing that I'm gonna jump in and uh, I was gonna change this to overlay, right? So I'm just trying to like, you know, boost that up. In fact, let's go into our brushes again. And since I really found that brush I like, let's go and it was dry media. It is the Conte, which I could always search for. Um, but here's the Conte pencil. I'll just move it up here because I typically just like frequently used. Here's all my frequently used brushes. Now that one's up here and easy to access. But now let's let's see if we can paint in here. Eh, nah, that's not working. But again, just I would add a little bit like so. All right, cool. You guys get the idea. Let's move on. How would you thicken the rough edge? Um... Yeah, okay, I think we're on the same page. I'm trying to thicken it now. So that's why I'm adding this, this like highlight right in here. Uh, another thing is I would think about smudging it, right? So let's take that and let's go to this. We'll go to smudge. We'll switch to just a soft round and we're gonna smudge this. So now we're tr it's kind of giving it that, like uh, maybe a little bit more of a rounded edge, if that's what you mean by thick edge, right? So I'm just kind of rounding that out. And by the way, we could sharpen this in parts, right? So again, we're just trying to make that look. Try to make it blend in a little bit more is the goal. All right, cool. We played with that edge. We've made it look rough. Copy, then darken the black, the back one. That's good. Um, I would try not to copy the main layer too much, like that, uh, the actual pixel base layer. But like, if I could, if I could paint on other layers with a darken mode and things like that, that's what I'd go for. Uh, but I'm getting too far ahead of this because also I wanted to like put some light in there and do some different things as well. So that's that's another thing I want to work on. Um, Mostly you use a roux to thicken the sauce. Man, Reverb Mike, keep impressing me, man. You're like, oh, you know even about cooking. You know how to cook, man? I'm not crazy about this cut, you know. It could still be like a lot more rough, but that's okay. Let's go back in here, take this, drag, flip vertical. Oh, yeah, I just had a brilliant idea. <laughs> this is basically a neck right here. Copy, paste. Okay. Checking the time. I have five minutes. So I'm only going to do two parts of this. it into place. Work it. Work it. Oh yeah. There's the lower neck. Vector mask. Pixel based mask. Gives me that flexibility that I like. Being able to like blend these two together. 
for this part. Warp it a little bit more. All right. Here we go. Here is the Here's the soul of the person. Yeah, we're getting deep. Here's the soul. We want this mouth to be on top of everything else. So it's in front. And uh, let's play with that a little bit, shall we? Oh, Biola, you are too sweet. Okay, so uh, when when making a glow, again, I'm trying to make this pop. I'm, I'm giving this, like, of course, this nice glow that's actually going to be a different color. Let's just do this. I want it to be like goldish yellow, right? So kind of dip more into the gold. Take this, Command J, Command T, scale it up, like so. Clip it to the inside there. So what I did is I just added that splash of color right there. Actually, let's do this. You ready for this? Turn this off. Crank this up. So what I'm doing is I'm using levels to add that splash of light, right? That splash of color, right? I'm gonna make everything brighter, okay? But now we're gonna paint on this mask. Paint on this mask like so, getting rid of it around those edges like so, like that. So that's what we're doing, right? So creating that nice glow on the inside without throwing a different color on top of it necessarily, right? You can do that. Um, but you're at least gonna have to change that to overlay or something, okay? Uh, typically you need to do about this, this about, you know, 15 more times with a bunch of different bursts that are all different sizes. Cause what do you do? If you look at a burst, it's gonna be smaller, more intense, brighter. So again, crank up the saturation, uh, crank up the brightness, right? And that's what we have in the center there. Command J again, Command T. We want to have, we want to throw a sphere in here. That would be fun, huh? Can we throw a sphere in here? I like that. So again, this is the person's like soul hanging out. Um, and uh, excuse this smooth edge, which is probably annoying everyone. I, I deeply apologize. But again, you get the idea. Adding that in, we've we've only gotten so far, but we're well on our way. It's again, um, even notice as I change sort of the background color to something else, this like pastel color changes the entire look. Uh, but I'd want to add some more overlays in here. So uh, I'm just getting started. So I'm going to work on this some more. So stay tuned, I guess. Keep an eye out on... Um, like Instagram, as I start to tighten this up and, and, and just give it that splash of color and that pop and that vibrancy. Uh, and let's not forget the uh, one I worked on earlier, which is this one. Um, hopefully you appreciated it, sort of adding that pop of color. Um, and thank you so much, everybody. Um, yeah. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Let's stay in touch. You can see all of my intel, as you can see, right here. So feel free to hit me up. Let's keep the conversation going. Got uh, Jason Levine's up next. Gonna be doing some awesome magic. Oh, you can ask him anything. Video, oh, I said, I, I read the ask me anything and then I saw the video or audio. I just wanted to ask him, I don't know what he uses for his hair care, but I already know. <laughs> I wanted to ask him a bunch of personal questions, but no, it's just video and audio specifically. Dang it. But thanks so much. Uh, cool. It's going to be fun. I'm going to hang out with Jason as well. So hopefully you are uh, as I work on this. So let's work together. Uh, Marsha, Jurgen, Florian, Michelle, Yoshiko over there on YouTube. Appreciate you as well. And uh, we'll be in touch and see you guys 
very soon. So thanks so much for, uh, for hanging out. And have a great weekend. Right on.